Matamare everyone. Welcome to Wednesday the 19th of August and what a fantastic day of learning we had yesterday. Did you love doing that dancing raisin experiment? I really did. Um, Heidi tried to do to put an apricot in hers because she had no raisins and what do you think? It didn't work. I wonder why a raisin works and an apricot doesn't. Good on you Heidi for trying. Some of you got warm fuzzy stickers yesterday so Carpi, keep trying for those and see how many warm fuzzy stickers you can collect over lockdown. I might have said certificates, I mean stickers. Um, right, we're going to get started today and the first thing we're going to look at is my picture in the background and today I thought we'd just have a little think about animals that dance. Do you think animals dance? Remember we read that story about the giraffe who danced? Well I was watching the birds at the beach when I was there yesterday and they looked like they were dancing in the sky. And then I went and I had a play with the new kitten in our family called Billy. This is our new kitten um, that belongs to my son Matthew and his partner Sam. Her, she is he actually, not she, is just gorgeous. And Sam was chasing around with a little bow on a string and it looked like Billy was dancing. So I was thinking that dancing can take all kinds of forms, can't it? When you're out in the wind, your hair can dance in the wind. Your clothes can dance in the wind. Cats can play and dance. Birds can dance in the sky. And as we read in one of our stories, even butterflies and moths can dance. So you've got a fantastic story to listen to today. I hope you really enjoy it. And well done to those of you who listened to Mrs. Tarrell's story yesterday. As you can see, we're taking turns. And you're going to have a story this week also from Mrs. Smith. So that's something to look forward to. Rightio, let's get started on our learning today. And the first thing we're going to just quickly revise is our sounds that we've been learning about this week. And the first, this one wasn't the first one, it was the second one. We reminded ourselves that when an E is at the end of a word like gel E, the letter is Y. We also this week had a look at silent letters and we looked at the letter B. Sometimes it has an M in it and we thought about the word th um We don't say thumb, we have some words that have silent letters. And I know some of you got really busy and made me big long lists of words that had those. So ka pai to you. Right, Māori today, I thought we could just sing together our little song that goes like this. Toru ba. Tēnā koe, hello to one. Tēnā korua, hello to two. Tēnā koto, hello to all, haere mai everyone, welcome everyone. Yesterday we talked how the Māori people like to celebrate using dance and in Māori the word for dance is, let's say it together, kani kani. And we talked in the first picture and we'll just hold it up nice and close again, we can see that the lady is doing a poi dance. And I don't know if any of you tried a re takapoi, which was a dance that we had on our morning board yesterday. We also know, and those who love rugby often see the haka at the beginning of a rugby game, and that is a ceremonial dance that the Māori people like to do. Maths. My word, there's been some clever maths happening out there. You guys are just getting so smart. So today I thought we would try not using the number board. So I have written two numbers. Let's look at the first one first and it says the number 64. What number is 10 more than 64? Have a think while I write the answer. And let's see if you get it right. Did you say 74? Well done, because 10 more than 64 is 74, and if we're on the hundreds board, it would be underneath. So what is 10 less than 64? Well, I write the answer, you have a think. Did you get the answer? 54. If you did, ka pai, well done. Right, this time we're going to look at a three-digit number. See if you can read that number with me. It says 358. Now the first one says we have to add 10 more. So which column is the tens column? We know that it's this one, so we're going to add one more in there. While I write the answer, you see if you can think of the answer. 
and Kapai to you if you've got 368. The next one says, what is 100 more than this answer? So let's see what the columns are. This is ones, tens, hundreds. So we're going to add one more to this one. While I write the answer, you try and write your, think about your answer. Did you get the number 458? So well done. There's a really cool um, splat, splat hundreds board that I've put up online um, on one of the morning boards. You might be have tried using that. That's a lot of fun where you splat the numbers. So see if you can have a look for that. I bet you're waiting for a joke. Is that what you're waiting for? Okay, today's joke is really funny. Here it goes. How do you know if carrots are good for your eyesight? So you'll hear people say, eat your carrots. Your eyes will be strong if you eat your carrots. So how do you know if carrots are good for your eyesight? And there's a rabbit eating carrots. We know rabbits like carrots. And here is the answer. Have you ever seen a rabbit wearing glasses? <laughs> I certainly haven't seen a rabbit yet wearing glasses. I thought that was quite funny. Okay, today for writing, you have got a fun activity to do and you can either draw a picture of yourself dancing or you can use a picture off the internet of someone dancing. So let's bring the camera down and have a look what you have to do today. So it says, we are learning to sound out carefully. So we're going to brainstorm lots of words around our picture that are to do with the dancing picture you draw or the dancing picture that you cut out of the internet. So let's have a look at the words Mrs. Craig's done. Dancing, smiley, because I thought the girl was smiley, and E at the end of a word is a Y. I said that she had to concentrate. There was music. You have to use rhythm when you dance. Her dress was scarlet red. Her dress was swirly, and again, there's another one that has E sound, but it's a Y at the end. She had pointed shoes. Her dress was float E. Here's another one. And it looks like here, she is reaching. So you're going to write any words that come to mind. You might have a scarf on your picture, so you might write scarf. Or you might have a bow in your hair, so you might write bow. Remember, a brainstorm is any word that you think of. So have a think about that and enjoy doing those activities today. I look forward to seeing your work coming through. And I wonder who's going to get a warm, stick, warm fuzzy sticker for extra effort today. Hi, everyone. Have a fantastic day.